The province of Sultan Kudarat is in the deep south of the Philippines. Sultan Kudarat is part of the Soxargen region and its capital is Isulan. Every province has a capital, but few provincial capitals can rival the impressive architecture of Sultan Kudarat. One of the star attractions of the province is the provincial capital building, which is as striking as it is colossal. The capital building is perhaps one of the finest in the land. At the front of the building is an imposing statue of Sultan Kudarat, the person from which the province takes its name. Designated as a national hero, Kudarat repelled the Spanish invasion in the 17th century, preserving Muslim culture in the south of the country. The capital building is opulently furnished, home to beautifully hand-crafted furniture, upholstered lavishly in gilded and gold. The provincial governor's suite is equally majestic. Tour around and see some of the iconic rooms, such as the Sultan Hall and the King's Hall, which will leave you in awe. The building draws inspiration from Islamic architecture. Its large dome, one of the key focal points of the building, However, Sultan Kudarat's capital building is not the province's only treasure. The culture is equally rich and diverse, and the province is home to both Islamic and Christian faiths. In this province, traditions run strong, and the province is home to a plethora of dances and songs. Outside the capital building, the National High School Dance Champions perform with vigor and spirit. Their dance, reminiscent of the warrior ways of old, swords and shields in hand, the warriors moving in harmony and synchronicity. The most renowned attraction and one of the highlights of the year is the Kalimudan Festival. Kalimudan means a gathering, and what a gathering this is, a true show of unity. The gathering of all 11 municipalities coming together as one. All the ethnic groups in the province are represented, each one showcasing their art, music and cultural heritage. The festival commemorates the founding anniversary of Sultan Kudarat. Sultan Kudarat was once a part of the province of Cotabato which was dissolved into three smaller provinces in 1973. People flock from afar afield to the provincial capital of Sultan Kudarat to witness the spectacle that is Kalimudan. The opening parade sets the tone of the festival, dance, song and merriment to be had by all. Floats from each municipality cruise down the streets, each contingent headed by their beauty pageant queen, with a trail of color, sound and music flowing behind them. The parade is also a chance for the hardworking public sector employees, such as the teachers and the health professionals, to be appreciated by the community. Another highlight of the festival is the Battle of the Festivals. People line the streets to watch the procession of the street dancers from each province vie for the accolade of the best performance. It's a great chance to see the rich tapestry woven from each province's unique culture, history and tradition. The dances are an expression of the province, as is their costumes and the items which they carry. Each dance tells a story, speaking the province's history, and traditions through motion. The performances are certainly bright and vibrant. The dancers moving in synchronicity and in harmony to the beat of the music. Timeless practice has gone into these magnificent displays. A real sense of festival fever is in the air. The celebration spans both day and night. At night, the streets become alive with the sound of music, the streets becoming a disco. There are activities to enjoy and partake in during the festival. A montage of singers and celebrities draw in the crowds, filling stadiums with their various performances. Another highlight of the festival is undoubtedly the Muchana Sultan Kudarat. 
This beauty pageant is a chance to see the region's most beautiful women, Sultan Kudarat's finest, all gathered under one roof. Enjoy breathtaking performances and eye-catching dresses, elegant wear, classy and refined, to be dazzling costumes, to the more revealing. Which gem shines the brightest among the jewels? An impossibly hard decision for sure. Music and dance is certainly a prevailing theme. With several other competitions and performances held through the festival, such as the drum and lyre competition. There's also a color fun run. What makes this fun run so special? Well, after you complete it, you will soon find out. After the run is over, fun chaos descends all around as colored powder and paint flies everywhere, everyone wearing a smile upon their face, the run truly living up to its name. This annual Festival of Festivals is one not to be missed, a week full of activities offering something for everyone. It's a great way to learn about the people and their culture. A few minutes away from Dakorong City is the municipality of Lambayong. Rich in agriculture and a bountiful producer of local products. Famous for its sprawling picturesque rice fields, as well as its mouth-watering rice-based snacks, such as bibinka, kuchinta, and puto. These snacks owe their distinctive flavor from the use of muscovado sugar. Muscovado sugar is certainly very popular here, and if you have a sweet tooth, this is an excellent place to visit. Every municipality has a unique culture, just waiting to be explored. The municipality of President Quirino is no different. Their beautiful dances garbed in colorful native costumes, which are both eye-catching and elegant. The municipality of President Quirino takes its name from Elpidio Rivero Quirino, who was the sixth president of the Philippines. The municipality of President Quirino is famous for its production of muscovado sugar. Muscovado is a type of brown sugar made from the sugarcane plant. The sugar is moist and relatively coarse and has a distinctly sweet molasses taste to it. It is also known for its rich aromatic flavor. It is said to be healthier than that of refined sugar. As the processing is done completely natural, no chemicals are used whatsoever, Muscovado is also rich in vitamins and minerals, and it's a great cooking ingredient. Firstly, the sugar cane is crushed to extract the sweet juice within, which is then subsequently filtered to remove any impurities. Muscovado sugar is made by boiling sugar cane juice in large vats. Then the reduced mixture is left to dry and crystallize. The end product is a healthy alternative to modern refined sugar. The sugarcane plant has many other uses too. It can be turned into sugarcane vinegar as well as sugarcane wine known as basi. From open fields to quiet lakeside towns, the province is certainly a place of variety. Lutayan Lake is a place of serenity, beauty and charm. A timeless vista where traditional practices still hold true. And there at the center of it all stands the Red Palace. A landmark building at the heart of the fishing community, used as a stopover for fishermen and as a convention center too. The lake is rich in marine life, home to fishes of every conceivable color, shape and size. Fishing and fish farming are important industries for their local peoples. The waters are teeming with fish and the cultivation of bangus and tilapia are one of their specialties. The fish are raised naturally with no synthetic feeds used whatsoever, leading to truly wholesome, healthy and more importantly, tasty fish. 
The freshly harvested fish are put to ice straight away to lock in the freshness and wholesome flavor. The life of the fisherman is certainly physically demanding. Teamwork is key, the harvesting hard, but the bountiful reaping makes it all worthwhile. And while you are visiting, you must try just how tasty that freshly caught fish is. The people of Lutayan are a welcoming people. And the surrounding areas are home to members of the Blan tribe. They are famous for their colorful, vibrant costumes, striking woven abaca designs, and rich cultural heritage. They really know how to have fun. Their dances are lively, dynamic, and animated. For the more adventurous, relax in the rivers and falls of Colombio, a place endowed with natural beauty in abundance. Here, there are a plethora of waterfalls just waiting to be discovered. Witness the magnificence of nature and see the creative power of water at work. These unblemished falls will provide hours of endless adventure and joy. Each set of falls unique in their own right, but all of them natural pieces of arts. The province is awash with forests of swaying palms, which extend beyond, as far as the eye can see. These thriving plantations are the basis of a flourishing industry. From their fruits, oil can be made. The palm oil fruit comes in by the truckload and is emptied into giant mechanized hoppers, which measure out the correct portions into giant vats, where they are moved to be processed. Both palm oil and palm kernel oil are derived from the same reddish-brown fruit of the palm tree. The outer layer, which encases the kernel, is processed and turned into palm oil, whereas the kernel itself is turned into palm kernel oil. These oils are cheap and a popular cooking ingredient. Not only can the fruit be utilized to make a variety of useful products, but so can the fronds of the plants which are used to produce kalakat, the other novelty item. These native houses are plentiful throughout the whole province and considerable skill and effort goes into making each one of them. The paneling is made from kalakat, which are sliced into long slithers, which are then woven into place, piece after piece after piece. This is a task of much patience, devotion, and skill. The contrasting colors of the kalakat allow striking geometric designs to be woven into creation. Housing and art coming together as one. Takurong City is the trading center of the province and a surplus producer of rice. The city is home to the Southern Philippine Grains Authority, which was once one of the biggest in Southeast Asia. However, that's not all the province has to offer. While you are in the province, here are a few other must-see places. Takurong City is home to one of the region's prime ecotourism destinations, the Baras Bird Sanctuary. The sanctuary is home to thousands upon thousands of migratory birds. Various types of herons and egrets can be seen in abundance, roosting in the trees and circling in the air above. From humble beginnings as a black peppercorn farm, it has over the years transformed into a center of tourism. It is estimated that the farm is home to over 20,000 birds, some of which, such as the nocturnal black-crowned night heron, are believed to have come from as far as Japan. The woods are alive with birds, their melody singing out throughout the air. Barras Bird Sanctuary is perfect for bird and nature lovers alike. A good time to visit is right before sundown, 
when the night herons begin flying out to their hunting grounds and the diurnal birds begin to arrive in flocks. Resorts dot the city. One resort of note is the Monte Vicentiu. One of the city's annual highlights is the Talakudong Festival, which is the city's biggest celebration of the year. The festival is named after the hats used by local farmers. These hats have been used for generations and are still in use today. For those seeking relaxation and fun with the whole family, try swimming or bathing at the refreshing Esperanza Hot and Cold Springs, which are located in Marges, Esperanza. Enjoy the two contrasting pools, one ice pool and the other intensely hot, the waters warmed by the earth itself. Marges Hot and Cold Springs is also a jump-off point to many other adventures, such as horseback riding, river trekking, and mountain climbing up Mount Ugis. Bordering the municipality of Senator Nino Aquino is the municipality of Bagumbayan, a thriving agricultural area known for its coffee, vegetables, and fruit, but perhaps is most famous for its abaca and corn. Before the dawn of modern polymers, the abaca plant and the husk of the corn were an invaluable source of natural textile. From plants that grow with skillful processing, refinement and masterful craftsmanship, they can be transformed into almost anything. From the most decorative to the most functional of items. The group of women are known as the Neo Country Crafts for Bagumbayan or New Town and are famous for their production of hats, placemats, wallets, and much, much more. The surrounding marshlands are an invaluable source of water lilies, which are used by the local folks to produce bags and other handicraft items. On the western side of the province lies several charming coastal towns, such as Lebak, Kalamansig, and Palimbang which enjoys views out and over the Celebe Sea. The municipality of Leba is Sultan Kudarat's northernmost coastal province. Ramirez Beach is the perfect place to watch the sun go down. The picturesque beach enjoys breathtaking views, fresh sea air, and clear sandy beaches. Nighttime is also the perfect time to check out the town of Lebak's night market. Try succulent rotisserie pork, known as lechon. Moist on the inside with a crispy outside. Sample a variety of food from barbecue kebabs, deep fried chicken feet. The culinary adventure doesn't end there. Another local delicacy is balut, which is a partially developed duck egg. It's neither duck nor egg, it's somewhere in between. And the locals can't seem to get enough of it. The region is also famous for its seafood, in particular, its crabs, shrimp, and tuna. The sea is not only the source of crab, Barangay Kinuldalan is known as a center of crab farming and is especially noted for their delectable crustaceans. And beneath the murky waters lay crabs of giant proportions. The brave workmen wade into the water to retrieve the captured crabs from their handmade traps. The experts can easily distinguish between the male and the female crabs by the underside of the crab's carapace. For mature males, the abdomen is thinner and more rectangular. Whereas for mature females, it is larger and rounder. The area is also a rich farming area. The water buffalo toiling in the fields, these powerful beasts of burden turning over the land, a romantic view of the countryside 
untouched by modernity. The region is also home to tropical mangroves and no place more so than Barangay Taguisa. Paddle or ride through the waterways of the tropical mangroves and tour the plantation and get close to nature. Explore the peaceful calm waters and enter a lost world. Then travel on to the natural sandbar, a wonder of nature. The sand jutting out into the ocean, reaching out from the land into the sea. Not only is the place beautiful, but it is also home to some equally beautiful creatures. These majestic turtles grace the shoreline and enjoy the protection of this wildlife and marine sanctuary. A rare chance to see some of nature's wonders so up close. The next municipality down from Lebak is Kalamansig. The town exudes charm and beauty, and one of the centerpieces of the town is the Kalamansig Municipal Plaza. The lawns are manicured like a bowling green, and the rustic trees which line the road offer plenty of shade for all. Across from the plaza is the Kalamansig Municipal Wildlife Rescue Center. The rescue center houses a variety of tropical species, ranging from the avian to the simian, through to wild boars and several native species. And don't forget to visit the scary pythons. The center offers the chance to see rescued rare and exotic animals at an arm's length. Just a short boat journey away from the Kalamansig Wharf is Poral Beach, which is situated in the barangay of Santa Maria. It's the perfect place to relax, clean, quiet, and calm. Lounge around in native beach huts or upon the open sands, under the shade of the trees, and enjoy the cool, fresh sea breeze. A place for sun worshippers to revel in a quiet getaway like none other. Kalamansig Wharf is also your doorway to an island hopping adventure. There are several enchanting islands nearby with their beautiful beaches just waiting to be explored. The journey out to the islands takes around an hour. It's a voyage of spectacular views, a chance to see. Striking rock formations framed by vegetation of luscious green. The waters are as clear as glass, the glistening blue in the sun. Visit the secluded island of Paril as well. Balut Island An unspoiled tropical paradise, it is said that this captivating island is named Balut Island on account of its egg-like shape, hence the name Balut, a Filipino delicacy made of boiled duck egg. The island is sparsely populated. Its remoteness is a shield from modern development. A small fishing community called this place home. They live by traditional means, everything they need surrounding them. The trees provide materials for shelter and food. The ocean rich in seafoods. And the glare of the hot sun is used to preserve their catch of the day. Underneath the water lies equally matched beauty for the island is home to several renowned diving and snorkeling spots. Explore the rich biodiversity surrounding the island and embark upon an aquatic adventure. SNA. 
The municipality of Senator Nino Aquino lies in the south of Sultan Kudarat, west of Kalamansig. Senator Nino Aquino is known as the place of a hundred caves and a thousand thrills. Enjoy magnificent subterranean adventures which will leave you in awe. One of the largest caves in the area is Lagbasan Cave. Over the ages, minerals from the water have aggregated to form these impressive flowstone forms. Curtains of stone stalagmites and stalactites. There are also several smaller caves in the vicinity. Each one is an adventure in itself. Perfect for the intrepid explorer. One such cave is Tinalon Cave from the mouth of which pours a waterfall made from cool spring water. The water flows onto a nearby resort, which provides a refreshing place to bathe. Another cave of note contains urns filled with the remains of the dead. The countryside is strewn with fields of green, with crops upon crops of corn and abaca picturesque rice fields, and orchards of coffee adorned by drops of purple-red. These colorful berries are the famous coffee bean in its natural state. Senator Nino Aquino is considered to be the largest producer of coffee not only in Sultan Kudarat, but in the whole of the Philippines. The plantations are indeed extensive, spanning almost 30,000 hectares, specializing in Robusta, Arabica, and Excelsia coffee varieties. The harvesting season is around November to February, and the region supplies many of the large names in the world of coffee, such as Nestle and Figaro, among others, as well as producing their own distinct local blends, such as Brown Cup, and Kulaman coffee. To explore the culture further, why not visit the Manobo Museum, which showcases cultural history and heritage of the Manobo tribe. Learn about the story behind these pieces of native art, how these local handicrafts are made, and the meaning behind the local dress. Do all of this while being guided through the museum by local experts sporting native costumes. Some of the metalwork is quite impressive. These intricate pieces must have taken hours of work to fashion and are a testament of the skill of the local tribespeople of long ago. The museum showcases a variety of native instruments from giant gongs which when struck vibrate through you to a plethora of rather unusual wooden percussion instruments, as well as weapons and other unusual tools. The Manobo tribe are also known for their eye-catching geometric designs. Particularly impressive is how to create fire from just a spark. Trained hands strike metal against stone and capture the spark into the tinder held between the thumb and the stone narrowly missing the thumb with every strike of the blade the ember is then added to some kindling which is then stored in a bamboo container essentially a portable fire south of kalamansig is palimbang a coastal town dominated by the fishing industry its uplands home to vast natural resources such as rattan nito and pandan which are the perfect materials for furniture or handicraft items. The roads traversing the province of Sultan Kudarat zigzag along striking mountain vistas. The location and geology of the land leads to striking inversions, layers which trap the clouds to form a carpet of white which enshrouds the countryside. The geology of the land also plays an important role in shaping the character of the province. Indeed, the area is known for its striking caves, waterfalls, and natural springs. It 
It is said that a lot can be learned from a people by the way they perform. Sultan Kudarat's lively music, dance, and bright costumes convey a true sense of the spirit of its people and reflect the diversity of its culture. Though each municipality is unique in its own right, they share many commonalities, drawing them together as one, a land of heritage and history. Enjoying many of the province's natural beauties, from tropical islands to mangroves and rolling hills. Visit its spectacular caves, picturesque waterfalls, and refreshing springs. See its many wonderful creatures, both great and small, many rare, all certainly beautiful. Sultan Kudarat is also a place rich in agriculture and a bountiful producer of local products such as its aromatic coffee, sweet muscovado sugar, and rich palm oil. Sultan Kudarat, deep in the south of the Philippines, a place just waiting to be explored and discovered, a place which certainly has a lot to offer and sure to not disappoint.